Hello, my name is Tessa. I'm one of the online tutors. I'll be helping you review for the AP environmental exam. If you have any questions, we'll provide you with a link where you can access us questions as well as an email and website where you can contact an online tutor. Hi everybody, this is another installment for the AP environmental exam. This section will be talking about pollution. So here we go. Let's have a quick overview about the nitty gritties of it. About 25 to 30% of the exam will be on pollution. Um, all the words that I made bold or in red are going to be key terms. So pay attention because you definitely want to study these later. Um, here's another great in depth look at um, what you should study for environmental AP. So take a look at this website because it's a great resource too. Um, the topics we're going to be covering today are going to be toxicity, air pollution, climate change, water pollution, solid waste, hazardous waste, and noise pollution. All right. So toxicity and health. A toxin is any substance that does damage to living organisms when inhaled, ingested, or absorbed. Um, anything can really be a toxin, like even water in large enough qualities can. Um, while the toxicity of a toxin is the degree to which um, something is harmed. Here's some other key terms that deal with um, toxicity that you should look up and definitely know. Um, pathogens are my, my, microorganisms that cause disease. An infection is the result of a pathogen invading our body, and disease occurs when the infection causes change in the state of health. Um, the, these are the five main categories of pathogens. It's very important to remember these. And remember, not only pathogens can make you sick, um, toxins and environmental factors can definitely make you, make you sick too, along with other things. The risk assessment is calculating the risk or the degree of likelihood that a person will become ill after exposure to a toxin or pathogen, while risk, or risk management is reducing, like, is using strategies to reduce the amount of risk. All right, next up is air quality. <laughs> air pollution, um, basically air pollution when like pollinates are released into the air. They could be natural like pollen, dust, mold even, or, or they could be created by humans, such as cigarette smoke, cars, and the major thing contributor to air pollution, the burning of fossil fuels. These are the six pollinates um, that do the most harm to human health, aka they're also called cateria pollinates or the dirty half dozen. You can also look at this website to know, even read even more up about them, too. Smog is a, re is a result of air pollution. Industrial smog or gray smog is formed, when, formed by burning oil or coal. Um, this is the kind of smog that you can see like in industrial cities such as like Beijing, China has this kind of smog. While um, brown smog um, is formed on hot sunny days in a city. This is the kind of smog that covers LA, um, Athens, Greece, as well as like other big cities. This slide talks about the ozone depletion. Just read up on it because this is really informative, the picture is really informative, and as well as this. Ozone loss, and these two were our key terms, so try to definitely remember them. And acid rain. 
uh, as the precipitation is like the process of pol- pollinates and the air could buy my water ve- vapor to change the the pH of the water in the air. Thus, what as it rains, it the pot and goes back into earth, it can definitely damage the environment. Because of this, like um, the Clean Air pa- a- pa- Act was passed to like reduce the amount of air pollution released into the atmosphere. Indoor air pollution is just as dangerous as outdoor air pollution. Usually it's found at higher co- concentrations the, be, because of the lack of um, indoor airflow. These compounds right here are leading causes of air pollution. pollution. And these are the kind of things that are found like in your furniture, carpet, cleaning fluids, a lot of different things. While sick building syndrome is what occurs to you, like, but the building is making you sick. All right, climate change. As you know, a lot of things have been happening with climate change. Um, increased emissions and in greenhouse gases lead to increased temperature on Earth. Um, the three, these are the three major gases that are changing the climate that we know. This climate change leads to increased intensity in storms, and rising water level, um, a lot of different things that are not good for the environment. Thermal pollution um, is a, a form of climate change and an effect of climate change too. Heat islands are urban areas that heat up more quickly and retain more heat than non-urban areas. As you can see in this graph, this represents like a rural area in the summertime, 85 degrees hot but not crazy hot, while in the city it's 92 degrees because of all the black asphalt down, because of all the people there and such. This is why we care about heat islands. It's because the increased energy consumption, elevated emissions of air pollution and greenhouse gases, compromised human health and comfort, and impaired water quality can all result from these heat islands. There's a lot of things that can be done, and here's our um, some some of the main strategies that are used, like increasing parks and trees and, and more green spaces added, replacing dark roofs with more like reflecting roofs, like with light colors and stuff, and creating green roofs and rooftop gardens and reducing water runoff. Another thing that happens with thermal pollution is when um an area or town or is in like within a, um, a valley. Sometimes the, the warm air cannot ex- escape. And this happens right here, as you can see in this picture. It's called temperature inversion. And now let's talk about water pollution. Here are some um, sources of water pollution right here. As you know, water, with water pollution, um, it decreases our amount of safe drinking water, and that's very important because we need water to survive, and like, such as fish and stuff can't survive without water, and that's a major source of protein for m- the majority of the world. This is how we test water quality. Um, the most important factors for judging water quality are pH, hardness, dissolved oxygen, turbidity, and BOD. Water, um, wastewater is water that has already been used by humans and it usually goes through these treatments so it's safe to either use again or put back into the environment to a to where we will not harm the environment. 
So it'd be physical treatment, primary treatment, and secondary treatment. And these are some water um, quality legislations that have passed um, to help preserve the quality of water that we have. This is definitely some things that you should remember for your test. Um, here's more some more key terms that have to do with water that you want to look up and um, remember and memorize. Not solid waste. Recycling is a great way to deal with solid waste. Um, recycling is reusing materials and it helps minimize the waste that goes back into the planet and harms the planet. Um, primary, so there's primary recycling, secondary recycling, and even composting is a form of recycling. Almost all the sol solid waste that is not recycled goes to landfills. And it's not the landfills we see on TV so much anymore as they're trying to like make more sanitary landfills in the, in the modern world in order to not affect the environment as much. I see waste to energy program is when making our, the way we deal with our waste to generate energy. Hazardous waste. Any waste that harms humans is hazardous waste, whether it be corrosive, ignitable, radioactive, and toxic. All They're all harmful. And the way that we deal with these wastes um, differ in how we see them. We either put them in landfills sometimes, um, and do it injection wells, or in surface Impound, impoundments. Noise pollution. Noise pollution is any noise that causes stress or has the potential to harm human health. Um, you U.S. actually passed an act to control noise pollution. And this is it. You want to remember. You definitely want to remember this. Well, that's all the points we're going to touch up on for this review. Let's, let's do some questions. I'm going to go through them and pause your screen, do the questions, and I'll post the answers in the bottom. This is one through three. And this is four through six. This is seven through nine. And it's the last set, 10 through 11. And that's the end of our video. Thank you for watching. Now, if you need any more help, definitely follow the directions below to either email us, go on the Google Doc, and ask any questions you have that other students may also have. And also, you can receive free, free online tutoring for any subject, as well as this one, through our website. We're, we're prescri we'll describe um, how to do this in the description below. So have fun studying. Good luck. Don't stress out too much. I'm sure you'll do fine. Thanks.